Well, as I mentioned, it was a big news week for tech companies culminating with Research in Motion conceding last night that it missed analyst sales estimates for the quarter and is losing the battle for consumers. With me to look at RIM and other news is Dixon Dahl. He's the general partner at venture capital firm DCM. Dixon, great to have you back here on In the Loop. Nice to be back. What do you think is going to happen to RIM? I think it depends on what the uh, new CEO does. Uh, he's got to figure out a strategy and uh, it's got to be a bold one and they have to move very quickly. The, the hard facts of reality are that uh, RIM is nowhere in the uh, mobile wars. Uh, the, the two dominant players, uh, Apple with iOS and all the, uh, the family that are supporting Android are uh, stealing the show. And the, the way you look at success in that marketplace is by uh, who the developers are supporting. And RIM is kind of nowhere. It's a distant third. Don't you think it's going to get sold? Um, it's a possibility. But uh, it's always a lot easier to get companies sold when they're uh, dealing from a position of strength than from right. a position of weakness. Uh, what would you say, because you've managed so many companies, I mean, why do you think it took so long for management to wake up to this? Um, I think there was a problem with the uh, co-CEOs and the fact that, uh, that they dominated the company and probably made it uh, challenging for the board to uh, exercise its, uh, its fiduciary duties. Okay. Not saying that they uh, were negligent or anything like that. I just think it was a complicated situation and people get into a comfort zone and they start uh, reading their own press releases and breathing their own exhaust fumes and uh, <laughs> complacency can set in. All right, Dixon, let me talk to you about, because um, the last, last several times you've been on, we've talked about uh, the JOBS Act. Right. And it finally passed the Senate, expected to be signed uh, by the president. And for those who don't know yet what the JOBS Act is, it's basically, as we've talked about, you know, allows companies, startup companies really, um, smaller firms to get a jump start on, on listing on public exchanges. And, uh, you know, we see all the positives from this. I mean, you have said yourself that it's going to help create jobs because a lot of companies create jobs after they IPO. Uh, one very big critic of of the Jobs Act is Senator Carl Levin, a Michigan Democrat, longtime senator there in, in that state. Um, and here's what he said about the Jobs Act. It takes more than a clever acronym to create jobs. And as the astonishing amount of concern among market experts tells us, this Jobs Act, this so-called Jobs Act, is not a Jobs Act, but an invitation to the kind of fraud that destroys jobs. Now, that, you know, certainly is, uh, you know, some very strong statements, but there are some parts of this act that some critics have said raise, raise some issues. Uh, you know, the fact that, uh, that, that the companies are going to be able to, you know, market themselves to both investment bankers and analysts at the same time without lawyers present could raise some firewall issues. Um, also, the fact that uh, they're going to be able to, get, you know, uh, market themselves to investors without having to give extra financial information that might be required under the Sarbanes-Oxley Act uh, for bigger companies. I mean, those are legitimate issues to be worried about, though, right, Dixon? They are potential concerns, but uh, let's go back and look uh, at when we introduced Sarbanes-Oxley. Uh, it didn't prevent uh, the collapse of WorldCom, and it didn't prevent uh, the Madoff uh, fiasco from occurring. So as long as people, um, you know, want to do bad things, there are going to be incidents uh, like that. And I think the JOBS Act is designed to, um, you know, to represent, uh, you know, fair compromise uh, uh, from the, and an evolution away from the one size fits all that uh, regulations that were introduced on the capital markets by, um, you know, by the Sarbanes-Oxley in its original form. With respect to Senator Levin, I, uh, I think he's very knowledgeable in many areas, but I would uh, respectfully submit that, uh, that I think he's off base uh, on the fact that it isn't going to create jobs. There's an awful lot of data out there that speaks for itself on the, uh, the positive impacts that uh, you know, improved uh, capital markets and the ability for smaller companies to raise funds from multiple sources is going to, is going to be a very positive thing on the, uh, the overall U.S. economy, and it's going to make us more competitive uh, internationally, which is something we desperately need. So, Dixon, you're going to have companies that can go to the market faster now? Absolutely. Okay. I think a psychology of uh, entrepreneurs and venture capitalists is a very important thing too, and it's already turned positive. Uh, this week is one of the best weeks that we've seen in the IPO market in years, and uh, it's going to just uh, cause a mindset and uh, have people focus more on the uh, the possibilities of going public, and that's going right. to be really positive across the board. Dixon, great to see you again. Thank you, Dixon Dahl of DCM.